Brian had been dreaming about traveling the world. Once, he went to a job interview. Greg was a famous eccentric millionaire, and he needed help on his luxurious boat. Greg liked Brian's resume, but he needed to challenge Brian's intelligence and offered him this riddle. Turn these three toothpicks into one, and you're hired. You can make as many moves as you want, but you can't remove any toothpicks from the table. What should Brian do? Make a Roman numeral using all three toothpicks. Finally, the yacht left the port. Brian was very excited to begin his first round the world voyage. There were five people on the boat, Captain Nick, Brian, Greg, his girlfriend Lisa, and their friend Robert. In the evening, Brian served dinner for everyone. It was fresh fish and salad. Can you tell what's wrong here? There are two moons in the sky. After dinner, Greg, Robert, and Lisa began dancing. Suddenly, Greg fell to the floor, asleep. Lisa got furious and yelled, Who poisoned my boyfriend? Brian said, Captain Nick prepared the dinner. I just served it. Robert said, I'm a vegan, so I skipped the fish. Maybe it was toxic. And Captain Nick said, Hey, I'm not a criminal. I ate that fish too, and I feel totally fine. Have you guessed what happened here? Lisa had a tiny bottle with sleeping pills in her hair. She must have slipped a pill in Greg's drink so that she could spend a romantic evening with Robert. They were flirting during the dinner. Brian realized what was going on and talked to Nick privately in the captain's cabin. The man got very angry and promised to make a stop at the nearest port to leave Lisa and Robert there. Brian went to the restroom. When he returned to the cabin, he saw that Nick was gone. Brian couldn't find him anywhere, so he questioned Lisa and Robert. Lisa said, I haven't left the deck after dinner. I was taking pictures for my Instagram. Robert said, Sorry bro, I haven't seen him. I've spent the last 20 minutes in the restroom. Brian spotted the liar right away. What about you? Robert couldn't be in the restroom because Brian was there. Brian got very scared. He didn't know what to do. Lisa brought three bottles and offered Robert and Brian to drink some cola. But Brian knew that he had to be very careful with that lady. Can you help him choose the safest bottle? someone had already opened this bottle, Brian should choose one of those two. Brian went to Greg's bedroom to check how the man was doing. He noticed that Greg's safe was open and empty. At this moment, Greg woke up and noticed that someone had taken all his money. He started to shout, Who dared to rob me on my own boat? Brian said, Mr. Greg, I'm so sorry. Rob and Lisa put sleeping pills into your drink, and I'm afraid they've done something bad to Captain Nick. When Greg questioned his companions, Robert said, Bro, who do you think I am? This guy is a dirty liar. Lisa said, Darling, I love you. Why would I do that? Who robbed Greg? It was Captain Nick. See, he's sailing away from the yacht with a bag full of money. He took the chance to frame Lisa and Rob. The guys were left without their captain. Nobody knew how to control the yacht. In the morning, they realized that they had got lost in the ocean. They had four choices. Move to the east and meet a creepy pirate ship. Travel to the west and disembark at a desert island. Go to the south and meet with the Loch Ness Monster. Go to the north and get stuck in the Bermuda Triangle. Which option should they choose?
The Loch Ness Monster is a very unpredictable opponent. The Bermuda Triangle doesn't seem to be very safe, and these pirates look pretty aggressive. So the safest choice is to move towards the desert island. They can send an SOS signal and wait for someone to save them. But a sudden storm changed their plans. It wrecked the yacht into small pieces. Take a look at this picture and try to guess how many people survived and reached the shore. All four. Although there are footprints of three men on the sand, someone must have carried Lisa in his arms. See? Her glasses are over there on the sand. The guys got very hungry. They separated to find some food on the island. Lisa found this palm and decided to pick some bananas. Greg walked through the jungle for some time and noticed this orange tree. Robert discovered a pile of coconuts on the ground, and Brian decided to catch some fish. Only one of these options is safe. Which one? A creepy snake is hiding among these bananas. A tiger is sleeping behind this orange tree. A scorpion is chilling on these coconuts. So fishing is the safest choice. After dinner, the guys gathered around a fire. They agreed to take turns sleeping to keep the fire going and scare wild animals away. Robert drew lots to be the first on duty, but he was very sleepy. Brian told him, It's okay, I can swap places with you if you guess my riddle. I'm as light as a feather, yet no man can hold me for long. What am I? Robert failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The answer is breath. Greg, Brian, and Lisa went to sleep, and Robert stayed by the fire. Early in the morning, Brian woke up and saw that the fire had gone out, and Robert was gone. Brian woke up Greg and Lisa, and they started looking for Robert. Can you help them find any clues on the beach? All four of them are barefoot. But now, there are boot prints in the sand, and a drone is flying in the sky along with the birds. It seems that this island is not as deserted as they thought. Brian, Lisa, and Greg walked around the island and found a villa on a rock. They wanted to come closer, but suddenly, they heard Lisa scream. Someone left a trap in the jungle and the girl fell into a well filled with trash. It was very deep, and Brian and Greg couldn't help her get out. Suddenly, it started to rain, and the pit began to fill with water very quickly. Lisa screamed, Help me, please! I can't swim! What should Lisa do to survive? She can take these two empty canisters and use them as a life buoy. And when the water level rises, she'll get out easily. The guys continued their journey to the mysterious villa. On the gate, they saw a combination lock with this clue. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. In the second line, nothing is correct. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys open the gate? Let's start with statement 2 and exclude numbers 9, 2, and 0. From statement 3, we can conclude that 5 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Let's take a look at statements 4 and 5. Both lines say that one digit is correct, but in the wrong place. So, the remaining digit can be either 8 or 6, but we already know that 7 is in the code. Therefore, the digit that fits statement 5 is 7. Now we can exclude 6 and conclude that the remaining digit must be 8. Now, let's determine the order. In statement 3, we have two correct numbers in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we only have one option. 
to put 7 first and 5 second. Therefore, the correct code is 758. The guys entered the villa. The backyard was full of pirates, and they were having a pool party. Suddenly, Lisa began to cry. Can you guess why? Robert is chilling with this lady pirate in the swimming pool. The girl is just jealous. When they finally came up to Robert, he said, Hey guys, check it out. These pirates let me join them. Greg, Lisa, and Brian decided to leave that place as soon as possible. But Robert wanted to stay because he got engaged with Gemma. She was a big boss there. Everyone worked for her. Brian looked around, searching for a way out. He noticed these three guys. He realized that one of them was an imposter. What about you? Can you see the imposter? It's the third guy. He has a police badge. He must be working undercover. The police officer's name was Mike. Brian asked him for help. Mike pretended that he didn't speak English, but later he gave Brian this note. It was encrypted and the ink was to disappear in 10 seconds. Can you crack the code? It says, helicopter. Greg, Lisa, and Brian jumped into the helicopter. Mike tried to start the machine with a stolen key, but the system demanded a password. Here's a hint. I am the beginning of sorrow and the end of sickness. You cannot express happiness without me, yet I am in the midst of crosses. I am always at risk, yet never in danger. You may find me in the sun, but I am never out of the darkness. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is the letter S. They say seeing is believing, but is it really? Optical illusions have a mind-boggling way to trick our brains. They use a combination of color, light, or particular patterns that can make us see things that aren't there. Today, we're taking our brains for a test drive and seeing how these illusions work. Let's start easy. Behind all of these little black dots, there's an image. Are you part of the 1% of people that can see it? It's a minion, congrats if you spotted that. Here's another one in this style. Can you see what's hidden here? It's a ninja turtle. Honestly, you did need to be a bit of a ninja to see that one. And what about this one? It's Homer Simpson. So now there's something hidden behind black stripes. How's your x-ray vision working? You got it if you said it's one of the dragons from How to Train Your Dragon. That's cute. We're moving on to phase two, so this will get a little bit trickier, okay? Your task is to find the fourth object in each image. You have seven seconds to spot all four items. Three, two, one, go. Hmm, did anyone find the straw by any chance? Anyways, could you spot the nail? What was hardest for you to find? The egg or the button? So now we're going to step up our game. This is medium level difficulty and you'll have seven seconds to find all four items. Ready? Go! Hmm, did anyone find the french fries? I sure didn't. Up next, four women and a baby. Yikes, this is hard. Could anyone spot the hair comb? 
Here's another one for you. Where on earth was that banana hiding? Good luck with this next one. So the envelope is hiding behind the bathroom pipe. I love black and white. But I'm still searching for that white egg if you ask me. If this were my room, my mom would be telling me to clean it up ASAP. -y. It took me a while to find that little birdie, but the mission was successful. Good morning, y'all. Oh, bummer, I couldn't find the book, could you? What object can't you find here? I had trouble locating the brush. Too many details, too little time. I have to say, you do have a pretty good eye for detail. But we're changing the game now. You know what they say. You need to keep changing the stimulus to make your brain work better and better. So now, it's emoji time. You'll have four seconds in this round. Did you see that one of them didn't have laughing tears? Where's the really sad emoji? And here I was thinking that clowns were supposed to be happy. I guess we all have our bad days, huh? What about this one? Oh, it's the browless one, isn't it? Can you spot the odd one? Oh, so it's a dairy-free burger. There's one with a different grim on its face. That's the one! I think your eyes are pretty warmed up now. So we'll move on to some hard-level optical illusions, okay? This first one is called the Impossible Triangle. But wait, what makes it so impossible? You have seven seconds to figure that out. The so-called Penrose Triangle is also known as the Impossible Triangle because it could never exist in reality. This magical triangle defies the laws of Euclidean geometry. If you follow the ball sliding on the surface of the triangle from the top point, you'll notice something strange. It looks like the left side of the triangle is extending away from the viewer, while the right side is closer to you. The Penrose Triangle is the type of geometrical figure that can only exist as an optical illusion because this is what it looks like if we dismember it. Not a triangle at all, huh? And this next illusion is called the Pac-Man Chaser. You'll see why. Stare at the central cross for five seconds. The image appears to be in motion, doesn't it? And you might also see a green disc appear in between the lilac spheres from time to time. Now this image allows us to witness two illusions simultaneously. Firstly, although the image appears to be in continuous motion, nothing here is moving, we promise. This phenomenon is known as the Phi Phenomenon. It happens when stationary objects are placed side by side and illuminated rapidly one after another, creating an illusion of movement. Now look at the center of the image again. Can you see the green disc? This second illusion is called an after image, and this happens when your brain tries to substitute an item with something else as the original item disappears. But why is it green, you might ask? That's because green is lilac's complementary color. If we were to change the color of the disc to blue, then the color of the gap changes to yellow, which is blue's complementary color. Neat, right? Can you stare at this parrot's eye for 15 seconds? Just keep staring at it. I'll tell you when you can close your eyes. You're about to witness another example of an after image. Three, two, one, and close your eyes. Can you see a red parrot? Isn't it amazing that even though this parrot is black and white, you have the illusion of seeing the color red? Again, this is just your brain trying to guess the color of something. 
Don't these snakes move beautifully? Except that, um, they're actually stationary. This classic optical illusion is caused by repeating asymmetrical patterns together with specific color schemes. The illusion mixes lighter colors like yellow and white with darker shades of blue and black. This combination makes your retina send signals to your brain, claiming that these circles are moving. If you want to debunk this illusion and see things as they really are, you need to stare straight at one part of the image. This way, you'll see that the rotation will slowly come to a stop. Take a look at this image. It looks like the square in the middle is breathing, right? Like it's growing in size and then shrinking? What if I told you that it's just rotating, but not changing its size? Here's what's happening. This illusion is called motion binding. It happens when our brain tries to predict the movement of one of the elements in the image. Crazy stuff! This one's another example of a motion binding illusion. These four bars seem to be moving in parallel with each other, right? Wrong! They are all part of the same moving square. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. Our brain just gets confused. How many bars can you count here? This illusion has left the internet baffled. People have counted as many as 11 bars, but most people count between 8 and 7 bars. According to the creator of this image, there are only 6 complete bars. Try counting from top to bottom, and you'll notice that the upper bars are real. But by the time you get to the 6th bar, things start to get blurry and confusing. That's because the last two bars are incomplete. So when you try making them out, they appear to multiply and only leave you more confused. If you trace your pointer down the seventh and eighth bars, you'll be able to see that they are incomplete. They were only put there to confuse you. Can you tell if the dark blue lines are parallel to each other or inclined? They sure look crooked, but in reality they are not. This classic optical illusion was first described over 100 years ago, but it wasn't until the 1970s that it got its current name, the Café Wall Illusion. A guy named Steve Simpson noticed a similar effect on the wall of a café in Bristol, and here we are. Now let's see how this works. First, let's blur the image a little bit. Oh, a little bit more. There you go. This way you'll be able to see that the dark blue lines are parallel to each other. If you look closely, the little black and white bricks at the intersection of wide lines are what makes this illusion possible. In addition to that, the curved elements inside the blue lines help to make the elusive effect even stronger. If you look at this image attentively, you'll notice a moving square that appears to be changing in tone. What shades do you see? Dark, then light, then dark again? Wrong. The square doesn't change at all. The creator of this illusion is Japanese psychologist and artist Akiyoshi Kitaoka. According to him, you can see your own brain changing its guess about the color of the square. Color is already an illusion created by our brains. It so happens that color is created inside our visual systems. What our eyes perceive as blue is actually a wavelength that is reflected as that color. Moving on, take a look at this staircase. It looks pretty simple, right? Well, now let's flip the image upside down. It still looks like a staircase. But instead of going from right to left, it looks like it's going from left to right. But don't blink. If you blink, the illusion will disappear, and you will be left with the original image. Whoa! This illusion is known as Schroeder's Staircase, and it was invented by German scientist Heinrich Schroeder back in 1858. It's simple, yet it reveals a fundamental mechanism of how our brain works. If we dismember the staircase, you'll notice that the image is flat. What our brain perceives as a 3D image is just a combination of shadow and light. This means that the 3D itself is already an optical illusion. This happens because our brain captures images and tries to fit them into what it already knows. So it sees a shadow in a 2D image and understands depth. Basically, it creates an unreal perspective of the object in front of our eyes. In this case, we call it a three-dimensional perspective. Up next, look at this black square crisscrossed with perpendicular white lines. If you look attentively, you'll notice that the white dots, situated at the intersection of the grid, shift their color from white to gray and back. When you concentrate on a particular dot, you see that it's white, but as soon as your attention wanders, the dot turns gray. That's the Hermann grid illusion. Amazing, isn't it? We can take this illusion one step further by positioning white dots at the intersection of gray lines. All are placed on top of the black background. If you look at this image long enough, you'll notice black dots starting to pop up at the intersections of the grid, creating a scintillating effect. Another name for this illusion is a simultaneous light contrast illusion. 
As you perceive the dots as white at one moment, and then, almost immediately, you see them as black. So why do our senses let us down by making us see gray or black instead of white? This illusion demonstrates one of the most important principles of human perception. You don't always see things for what they are. The retinal cells in our eyes act as light receptors. When only one receptor gets illuminated, it perceives more light than when its colleagues are also illuminated. This prevents the firing of nearby receptors. With the Ermann grid illusion, the white lines are arranged in such a way that there's more light around the intersections than along the lines themselves. Thus the dots at the intersections are more inhibited and you see darker spots. What do you say? Did your eyes pass the test? I guess mine did, but my brain is a little bit tired. See you next time. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.